Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more Sweetney. This time the animated history of France, and this is in five minutes, so I have absolutely no fucking clue how he's gonna do this in five minutes. Before we dive in though, make sure you go and check out the links below in the description box or in my pinned comment in the comment section. Would love it if you joined the Discord. Please do. We need I want it to be a very active site where people can hang out. Um and then hopefully in the future. I can figure out how to make it look pretty. Because right now it's pretty bare bones because I don't know how to fucking make a good looking Discord server. I'm not technically or artistically minded in that sense, you'd say. Um, but yeah. Let's go ahead and see how the hell he manages to cover this in five minutes. France is located in Western Europe between Germany and the Iberian Peninsula. Before the turn of the first millennium, most of the region was inhabited by both nomadic and tribal cults. For those that have seen my other videos, you'll begin to notice this as a reoccurring theme with early European history. Mm. The cults yeah. were on some land, the Romans came and took the land, and then poof, history begins. The cults were divided into two main groups, the Gauls and their south. Obviously he's over some I don't think he means genuinely like, ah, history begins. I think he just means, well, essentially written history to a certain extent. Um, uh... And then, of course, history kind of, or city-states and kingdoms as the way we know them today uh, really begins after the Romans conquer. And then when the Romans leave, because of the establishment that the Romans had left, that's how really our modern medie well, medieval European kingdoms really came to be, is because of the political structure that the Romans had created in Western Europe south and the Belgae in the north, but the area was actually quite ethnically diverse. There were Greek colonies in the French Riviera, and even a non-Indo-European people called the Aquitani, whose language and people is related to the modern-day Basque region. Gaul was mm. captured for the Roman Empire in 58 BC okay. by Julius Caesar, who brought the language of the empire, Volga Latin, which is the mm. ancestor of modern French. One of the conquered tribes was called the Parisi, who founded a city on an island in the river Seine in 250 BC. Because of its strategic location and easy defensibility, it became an important Celtic city and eventually the capital of France, called Paris. Early France shares much of its history with Germany, so if you haven't seen my other video on the topic, you can catch up by clicking here. But for oh. our purposes, we'll pick- That's how he's skipping around a bunch of information. Pick up right after Charlemagne's Frankish Empire was split into three kingdoms. West Francia, which became the Kingdom of France, covered most of the territory familiar to us today, but for a while it was a very disunited and non-centralized power. In yes. fact, I use the word kingdom very liberally, as the king really had no power at all in comparison to the princes, dukes, and clergy. Sure, he could sit on a throne and call himself king, but it was nothing more than a glorified title. One of the real problems came during the Norman Conquest of 1066, in which William the Conqueror became King of England while still remaining a subject to the French crown as Duke of Normandy, and I'm sure that won't become a problem anytime hmm. soon. Hugh of Capet seized power when he was elected in Yeah, so I recently read a book actually on 1066 by uh, historian Mark Morris. It's a good book. I'd recommend it. Um, I don't think it was good as... I, I think his book on Edward the uh, First uh, was better. Um, better written. But, you know, he still is a really good writer uh, for a historian. So, definitely recommend it. It's a thick book. Um, but yeah, it's really... Essentially, really, the King of France didn't have, like, any... Essentially, the Duke of Normandy and many other Dukes of France were essentially independent states. They really... It kind of was more... It seemed to me... It seemed to, to me to look more based upon respect uh, on, the, on the idea of a king and not necessarily on kingly authority. He, like, the king was certainly still politically important and politically influential, massively influential. You wanted, you still wanted the king on your side because he definitely was strong militarily because of the lands that he owned. Because obviously, usually, pretty much, the king of a nation in the medieval time period was the person that owned the most amount of land out of all the earls out of all of the nobles. He was the noble of the noble, noblest of the nobles. Making that up. Uh, or king of kings, right? If you want to say every single person of nobility is a king, but then the king is the king of them. Um, but yeah, early medieval time period, no authority. 
they pretty much were able to do whatever the fuck they wanted. In 987, establishing the Capetian dynasty. However, again, the title of king meant very little. The French during this period answered the call to crusade with fervor, and the Catholic Church grew in significant importance, with the clergy holding much power and influence in the region. With each passing decade, the Kingdom of France lost more and more land to the Anglo-Norman kings. Okay, it's a little weird. Uh... He's not updating the year, so it's a little bit confusing. To a point where all that war was fought between Philip II and Richard the Lionheart. But with Richard's death in 1199, okay, Philip managed to conquer it. much of his holdings in France. Tensions came to a boiling point after the death of Charles IV, since his only legal successor would have been the English Edward III, and a war was erupted in the disputed lands lasting more than a century, thereafter known as the Hundred Years' War. During the war, the countryside was ravaged by the Black Death, and when all signs were pointing to an English victory, a pious peasant girl named Joan of Arc lifted the English siege and helped repel the English from French soil. In 1477, France won the western half of Burgundy in a war with the Habsburgs, and in 1532 incorporated the Duchy of Brittany, greatly expanding her territory. France became a European superpower in the next few centuries, notably fighting a war with their neighbours for land, fighting another war with their neighbours for religion, mm. starting a sizable colonial empire in the New World, fought another war and with their neighbours for land, and became involved in the American Revolution. Debts from the wars began to mount, and the French peasants became increasingly dissatisfied with the monarchy, who by this point had gained unchecked power. The liberal ideas of the Enlightenment and the widespread famine paved the way for France's most famous political event, the French Revolution, as well as the rise of the military hero I think we've watched plenty of videos on the French Revolution where I don't need to explain Napoleon Bonaparte. Uh, With the establishment of a French parliament here. and the storming of the Bastille, the revolution saw the execution of Louis XVI and widespread chaos in hey France. Guys, come on, let's talk I will eventually this. cover the revolution in more detail, but the main point to take away was the success of a mostly chaotic French Republic against the First Coalition, largely due to a talented general named Napoleon Bonaparte. Never heard he of him. He then seized power from the divided French Republic in the War of the Second Coalition and began to win many wars in many successive coalitions against France. Even after Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo, he left a permanent mark on France and Europe, and ensured that French liberalism would spread throughout the world, even though that may not have been his intention. Mm. After the death of Napoleon, yeah. the country was politically unstable, but their economy was strong, building oh, a large nice. empire in Africa and Asia, enjoying cultural prosperity, but lost much of their dominance in Europe to the new formed German Empire. The Third Republic was formed and became the central focus for the German Empire during the First World War, who feared being completely by an alliance. Well, I guess he did say they probably covered, it was probably, I think it was covered in the German, uh, video about Germany. So yeah, not covering uh, German unification, I guess, makes somewhat sense. ...between France and Russia. France joined the side Ooh, of the Allies nice. and fared very badly during the first phase of the war, the war but eventually won the war with Germany's surrender in 1918. The war reparations at the Treaty of Versailles granted France the territories they had lost during the Franco-Prussian War in the previous century, but the treaty also made them unfortunate targets of Hitler's Nazi regime just 20 yep. years later. The French lost World War II very early on and were occupied by the Germans for the majority of the war, and much of their land was a theatre of battle between the Allied and Axis powers. After the defeat of the Axis powers, France rebuilt and sided with the capitalist West during the Cold War, and during this time lost their colonial empire. However, the modern-day French Republic is one of the founders of the European Union and the most visited country in the world with a huge tourism sector. Alright, and that was the animated history of France in 4 minutes and 43 seconds. Um, you know what? Much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think this is much better paced and much better explained than the history of Scotland. Scotland, Scotland felt like a, was a little bit of a rough video in my opinion. This one, I think was much better scripted for this, despite being, I think, what, half the length of the Scot Scotland video? Um, but I think that is due in part to them having covered this information, a lot of the same information in the unification of, in the Germany, uh, animated history of Germany videos. Um, so, you know, as a standalone, as just the animated history of France is definitely lacking. But if you take it into context with uh, the animated history of Germany, then I think it works fine. Um, I, I enjoyed this video. I hope you guys did too. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.